forward by 052. On. An investigation was launched into the continued viability of SCP-083. Several factors were taken into account, such as the relative danger involved in sustained containment and cost-benefit of the costly procurement of virgin blood on a regular basis. In conclusion, a unanimous decision to terminate SCP-083 was made amongst the O5 and handed down to Site-19 administrators. After researching the difficulties involved in terminating a regenerating, superhuman, and potential Keter object, the termination was set in motion. The man chosen for the task was an old standby, a man of great experience and expertise in the elimination of humanoid SCP objects of great destructive potential. Known for his clean, almost surgical method, he was quickly approved to carry out the termination. Unfortunately, he was not available. Despite urging from peers and subordinates, Dr. Kondraki was chosen to perform the termination. After giving himself the proper clearance and approval to do so through a loophole he had found in relevant regulations, O5 grudgingly accepted his self-appointment. O58 assuaged the board's fears with Dr. Kondraki's impressive credentials and claimed that given such an important responsibility, he might finally take his position seriously. It should be noted here that O58 was a new appointment and had not been present for the previous disciplinary actions involving the senior doctor. Included below are the relevant logs and documentation concerning the Duke termination. Note, for information involving the collateral damages sustained during the termination, see document 083-D-KK-052. Containment log 083-DK- Dr. Kondraki enters SCP-083's containment, carries a folding table and two chairs with him, proceeds to set up all three, as originally planned, taking a seat on one end. Well, isn't this a nice little accommodation? They treat you well, Duke. Real well for something out of a Bram Stoker novel. Well, I must be doing something right, Doctor. You know, come to think of it, I don't think I've seen you around Site-19. Good. You shouldn't have. Now let's get on with this interview already. I've got better things to do than chat with a bloodsucker. I'm not calling you on your diet, am I? Besides, I asked for the interview, and as you know, I do get what I want. Sure, sure. Although I remember you requested a woman. Hope you're not too disappointed, Count. Dr. Kondraki proceeds to light a cigarette, and produces a container of a specially treated fluid. In the pre-termination report, Dr. Kondraki did not specify the contents for security reasons. I can't say I'm pleased to accept a brutish specimen of humanity such as yourself over a lovely morsel of femininity. Don't worry, I'll just have to make it up to Miss once we're finished here. Dr. Kondraki proceeds to unscrew the top from the container and sets it to the side. SCP-083 appears to recoil from the smell. Agent Infred stepped forward to frisk Dr. Kondraki. He swiftly liberated a handgun from Kondraki's person. Sorry sir, this isn't authorized. Right, whatever. So why don't you tell me about yourself, Drac? Are you the mythical force of darkness that plagues the psyche of humanity? Or are you just a spoiled man-child playing vampire? I don't think I appreciate your attitude, Doctor. Or your lack of respect. <sighs> Blow smoke in SCP-083's direction. Funny. I don't recall giving a shit. Dr. Kondraki proceeds to grab the container and splash the liquid onto SCP-083, far before containment teams and backup agents could get into position. What the fuck did you just splash me with? Cat urine and garlic juice, bat boy. With a bit of silver nitrate. Dr. Kondraki flips the collapsible table up onto SCP-083 and grabs a firearm from under the table, muttering about always keeping a backup. He discharges his handgun seven times into SCP-083's chest and neck, before producing a wooden stake from his lab coat. The bullets were confirmed to be comprised of a silver alloy. None of these actions had been planned or approved. Cross that off the list of things I've always wanted to do. Post-Incident Interview DK-083 Interviewer, Dr. Interviewee, Dr. Kondraki. At what point did you conclude that SCP-083 might be vulnerable to the same weaknesses of a stereotypical vampire, despite no previous evidence? Honestly, I was guessing. I figured either it worked and I got done early enough to catch some lunch, or I'd have to think fast before he killed me. Think fast? That's it? Yeah. I couldn't think of anything else, so I decided to play it by ear. You're saying you made it up as you went along? Isn't that grossly irresponsible considering SCP-083's capabilities? He's dead, ain't he? 
I don't have to explain myself if I get the job done. Alright, fair enough. But I have to wonder about one more thing. Shoot, what in cat urine? Well, if I was wrong and it didn't work, he'd still be the one covered in cat piss. Didn't think he'd take offense like he did, though. Excerpt from Post-Incident Interview 083-963-21 Interviewed, Dr. Bright. And after reviewing the logs, do you think Kondraki acted recklessly? Dr. Bright? This... this tape is undoctored? That is correct, Dr. Bright. God damn it! Dr. Bright shows signs of agitation, swearing in several different languages, and throwing equipment about the room. Dr. Bright, what is the matter? Not only did I bet that asshole five grand that he wouldn't be able to throw cat piss at 083, but he didn't even have the good grace to die during the termination! Do you realize how much I'm gonna lose from paying out on that? God damn! At this point in the logs, we are unsure how Dr. Kondraki survived the following moments after the failed termination, due to the destruction of all surveillance equipment beforehand. Security cameras outside SCP-083's containment show Dr. Kondraki and SCP-083 exiting the containment approximately half an hour later. Forensic examination of the damages incurred within the containment are underway. Regardless, a red alert was issued, and security teams were dispatched to contain SCP-083 and get Dr. Kondraki to safety, including Mobile Strike Force Road 2, codenamed Hawthorne's Heroes. As hindsight shows, it would have been more economical just to have shot Dr. Kondraki. 052. Excerpt from Post-Incident Interview 083-KPC-13. Interviewed, Professor Kane Pathos Crow. It was really a pity about old lady three. I had a couple of things I wanted to do with him, like stick him in 914 on various settings and see what happened. Or see how exactly he regenerated from decapitation. Or how he reacted to 217. Or if he'd be a good organ donor. Or if he was- Uh, sir, if you could please just answer the question. Hmm? Oh, yes. Well, Dr. Kondraki seems to get by in these sort of situations. A master of pulling it out of his ass, so to speak. So you would label him as reckless, then? Yes, without a doubt. Uh-huh. So he's a potential liability. Oh, I never said that. Granted, he's about as inaccurate as a faulty hand grenade or something of that ilk. The only safe place to be around him is probably inside of him or something. But he gets things done, at the expense of everyone and everything around him not sturdy enough to withstand the blast. What? He does! Security Log C-083-K Dr. Kondraki exits down hall R-14 while SCP-083 pursues. Severe damage caused due to blindness inflicted by Dr. Kondraki's camera, see SCP-515-Archive, which caused considerable thrashing until regeneration set in. SCP-083 recovers and pursues Dr. Kondraki further into the central containment areas. Dr. Kondraki, with a small lead, is able to enter non-sentient object containment and makes his way past two armed guards by flashing his ID. SCP-083 enters non-sentient containment, kills and drains several nearby researchers, searches for Dr. Kondraki within the area, resulting in further casualties. Dr. Kondraki accesses a safe within containment removes a circular object, and retreats from containment block back into hallway R-17. SCP-083 continues to pursue, and appears to take chase. Moments later, a flash of light is seen by a camera down the hall, and a bright, disc-like object impacts SCP-083. SCP-083 loses his leg and falters. Dr. Kondraki stops to observe the damage, as the disc, confirmed to be SCP-388, codename The Ultimate Frisbee, continues through Site-19 and eventually comes to rest two kilometers away from the research facility. Dr. Kondraki approaches SCP-083 with a firearm drawn. SCP-083 begins to regenerate and stands up while bracing against the nearby wall. Dr. Kondraki is seen speaking before taking off down hallway Y-8. SCP-083 follows shortly after, hopping on one leg until the other regenerates. Seen screaming curses. Audio Log 083-D-K-4 Voices identified, Dr. Kondraki and SCP-083. Well, at least you got a leg to stand on, Count. <laughs> I'm going to kill you slowly when I get my hands on you. You don't even know what kind of shitstorm you've gotten yourself into, human. But I'm going to kill you and destroy everything you hold dear. What was that? I couldn't hear you over all that arterial spurting. He gestures to the missing leg. Hey, you know if this vampire thing doesn't work out, you'd make a great pirate. 
in about five seconds, my leg is going to regenerate, and I'm going to tear you to pieces! Break a leg, Drac. <laughs> Dr. Kondraki departs. I'll tear a chunk out of you for every one of these stupid retorts! Every single one! It was at this point, as Dr. Kondraki exited the area with SCP-083 in pursuit, that MTF-R2 arrived to attempt to restore containment of Duke. The termination attempt had been considered a failure by command, and the orders were limited to damage control. Unfortunately, the other security teams were still en route, and were never able to assist MTF-R2. If the order had gone out to evacuate all nuclear objects from the sector, they might have been able to. 052. Security Log Y-083-K Dr. Kondraki makes it to a three-way intersection before SCP-083 begins to catch up. A forklift moving a large metal box is moving up the incline directly to Dr. Kondraki's right. SCP-083 rounds the corner, but impacts the forklift which had been maneuvered to block the hall. Dr. Kondraki is seen at the door of a central staircase. At this time, they were on the 15th floor of the facility. SCP-083 proceeds to throw the metal box in a fit of frustration before beginning to move the forklift. Dr. Kondraki flees down the staircase. The metal box opens as it impacts the ceiling, and a large, disheveled ball of metal objects is dislodged and begins rolling down the incline. MTFR2 arrives by way of the central staircase to SCP-083's current location. Dr. Kondraki passes MTFR2. Contact with MTFR2 lost. Excerpt from Post-Incident Interview 083-CLEF-01 Seriously? No mistakes? I can't really see that Dr. Kondraki made any mistakes in his termination protocol up to this point, no. Seriously? Not at all. He had a primary kill mechanism, a backup plan, and a tertiary plan as well. The fact that his plan didn't survive first contact with the enemy wasn't his fault. The deaths of MTF Row 2 were a sad and unforeseeable consequence of the Euclid-class skips being moved. I see. So tell me, Dr. Clef, what if all of this wasn't part of some plan, and he'd been making it up as he went along? <laughs> if that's the case, sir, I'd say that Dr. Kondraki was a suicidal fool, but he certainly wouldn't have... He did? I have here a copy of Dr. Kondraki's termination procedure proposal. Step 1 is his plan to use cat urine and a pistol loaded with silver bullets. Backup plans 2, 3, 4, and 5 are listed as, and I quote, Wing it, make something up, cross that bridge when I come to it, and put my head between my knees and kiss my ass goodbye. Expletives have been redacted. Mobile Task Force Row 2's Combat Log We're coming up the staircase now to SCP-083's last known location. Sounds of a struggle are coming from above. Our intel must be spot on. He really screwed the proots on this one. Garlic piss? Where does he get that? Quiet on the approach, Six. Sir, incoming subject. Humanoid. It's... He's in lab coat. It's not Duke. He's running straight at us, sir. Neutralize him? Ready, subnerval electro neutralizers. On my... What the hell is that fuck, noise? Fuck, fuck, shit, fuck, damn it, shit, fuck. Get the hell out of the way! Run for your fucking lives! He's taking off down the stairs. Must have been Dr. Kondraki. But I don't see SCP-083. No contact on Duke. Continue up the stairs. What the hell is that? It's massive! Open fire! Open fire! It just crushed him! Get out of here! Get out of here! Screams continue. Audio cuts out. It was at this point that Command began to realize that SCP-083 wasn't the only threat to Site-19 during this incident. Although at this point in time, SCP-083 had caused the death of 17 personnel, Dr. Kondraki had been involved in three cases of containment failure. Most of these personnel had been minor employees, making their loss minor in comparison. MTF-R2 would be found by site security teams at the bottom of the staircase, completely entangled in SCP-162, codename Ball of Sharp, with several already having been crushed to death or bled out due to numerous lacerations. Containment of SCP-083 was quickly becoming a distant possibility, and Dr. Kondraki had vanished from visual contact. At the same time, another SCP had breached containment on the opposite side of the facility, and the chaos had made details scarce. Meanwhile, SCP-083 was on a rampage trying to locate the Doctor. Command was in disarray, and a choice would have to be made soon. It wasn't soon enough. 052. Excerpt from Post-Incident Interview 083-Iceberg-42 And so you're of the opinion Dr. Kondraki handled things recklessly? Oh yes, definitely. Would you call him a potential liability? 
Obviously. He's a danger just walking around. I see. Well then, Doctor, I- I mean, look at him! The guy's a lunatic! And one given far too much power. Alright then. Clearly he needs to be removed from his post! Probably terminated. Dr. Iceberg, that is not what we're- Now see, this leaves a slight opening. Head of research at Site-17, nice job. Now you see, with him gone, we need someone reliable to take his place. And I think I'm just the person to do it. I'm reliable, hardworking, good at hand-to-hand, -hand, intelligent, mostly sane, good at organizing, I know over 40 kinds of improvised explosives. I- That's quite enough, Dr. Iceberg. I believe our interview is over. Inner- Interview? You mean, all this was recorded? Yes. And Kondraki will be able to see this? Possibly. I need to go write my will. Security log C-083-K. Visual contact resumed with Dr. Kondraki. Seen breaking into a testing lab on the seventh floor. Takes possession of an experimental high-tension cable constructed from an SCP-143 alloy with carbon nanostructures. SCP-083 seen arriving on the seventh floor in pursuit of Dr. Kondraki. Security teams arrive to contain SCP-083, but fail to make an impact. Teams 4, 8, and 14 are wiped out. SCP-083 continues on his path. Dr. Kondraki recovers and dons a pair of Converse sneakers, recovered from safe object containment. Dr. Kondraki appears to move at an accelerated pace. Exits containment sector, heading down hallway D3. SCP-083 continues pursuit of Dr. Kondraki, ruining the containment sector. It is unable to catch Dr. Kondraki due to his enhanced speed, but it is able to make up time by bypassing walls in his path. Physically. Dr. Kondraki begins to move towards the Keter containment sector. His clearance bypassing the automated security systems. Proceeds to next checkpoint. All mobile task forces are alerted to the situation. SCP-083 is slowed by the security checkpoints and further resistance by site security. SCP-083's regeneration is able to keep up with any wounds inflicted. Site put on full alert, and all forces are redirected to Keter containment. Dr. Kondraki continues to pass through checkpoints. Arrives in a large containment room with a single door opposite to the entrance. Dr. Kondraki's security clearance is unable to clear the last checkpoint. He pulls an object from his coat resembling a conical object with a pistol grip. SCP-083 arrives in the room. Looks confused. Proceeds into the center of the room. Dr. Kondraki no longer visible. SCP-083 approaches the lone door. Dr. Kondraki's voice is detected. Appearance of SCP-408, codename Illusory Butterflies, reveals him standing near the entrance to the room. A verbal exchange is observed before Dr. Kondraki speaks into the handheld object. Visuals confirm it to be a megaphone of insignificant make. Tremors begin to rock the area, and several stress fractures are opened on the wall with the door. Containment of Keter Level Threat SCP-682 Compromised Excerpt from Post-Incident Interview 083-Dr. 62 Reckless is a relative term. Viewed purely from the vantage point of a termination test carried out against a nearly invulnerable humanoid SCP object, Dr. Kondraki's test achieved only a low to medium degree of collateral damage. So you feel that Dr. Kondraki's actions were acceptable? He achieved his intended goal. However, the loss of manpower, multiple containment breaches, widespread damage to Site-19, and a general lack of planning represent a gross oversight on the part of Dr. Kondraki. Demolishing a good chunk of a site is a little more than oversight in planning. Sir, if I may, I think we are focusing on the wrong direction. We assume that Dr. Kondraki is a loose cannon, a person who is reckless and puts zero foresight into anything he does. However, this is a narrow and dangerous assumption. What are you talking about? The human brain has a tendency to view highly complex and rapid patterns as random events. I believe that Dr. Kondraki used the termination of SCP-083 as an excuse, and the resulting highly destructive chase and containment breaches as a distraction. So you're saying he planned it? Not in a traditional sense. To use a mathematical example, he started with the solution and worked backwards to create the problem. The multiple containment failures, the evacuation of items, SCP-083 and its attacks on site staff, all of these stretched the resources of Site-19 to a dangerously thin level. This allowed him to achieve what I hypothesized to be his true goal. Which would be? To ride SCP-682.
excerpt from post-incident interview 083-clef-01. Wait, what? Audio log C-682-K. Well, well, well. Look where we've ended up now, Duke. Any guesses as to what's behind door number one? I couldn't give any less of a damn, because all I know is that I cut off the entrance to this area as I came in. You're trapped in here, Doctor. Trapped with me, and I'm going to enjoy every moment of it. <laughs> I figured you'd do something like that. I'll admit that this wasn't the best place to make a tactical retreat, but I do still have my trump. And what's that? Those stupid butterflies? You can't hide forever, and I will find you. Oh god, I cannot wait to see your face. But first, why don't we invite our friend out from his little room? Hey, you motherfucker! Dr. Kondraki begins screaming a series of obscenities into the microphone. SCP-083 attempts to cover its ears to no effect. What are you? You! You son of a bit! Transmission lost! It was at this point the command for Site-19 made the decision to quarantine all of Sector 3 for floors 7 to 15, sealing it from top to bottom and effectively sealing everything within the premises. With SCP-682 on the loose, SCP-083 still a threat, and Dr. Kondraki still breathing, it was hoped that the three would end up killing each other. With the survivor being significantly weakened by the preceding brawl, containment teams would move in to restore order. There were several unforeseen issues with this plan, namely not accounting for SCP-682, who was contained in the sector on a purely temporary basis, or Dr. Kondraki's ingenuity. If it had taken such things into consideration, it would be wise to have suggested the use of nuclear weaponry. 052 Security Log C-682-K Dr. Kondraki is able to escape the initial charge of SCP-682 as it plows through the room, disappearing once again in a cloud of SCP-408. SCP-083 is seen engaging SCP-682, looking severely damaged from the assault, but rapid regeneration is already observed helping him recover. SCP-083 is seen attempting to speak to SCP-682. SCP-682 pauses for a moment, and speaks for a moment. Without warning, SCP-682 strikes at SCP-083 and tosses him across the room while severing two of his arms and one leg. SCP-083 attempts to retreat and regenerate, but isn't able to make distance between himself and SCP-682. SCP-682 devours SCP-083 whole. No activity until a large rearing motion is made back. Dr. Kondraki is seen now on the back of SCP-682, holding two ends of the high-tension cable he had recovered earlier. The rest was fitted into an improvised set of reins. Dr. Kondraki is observed riding SCP-682 while hollering something and waving his hat with his free hand. SCP-682 enters an enraged state, and makes a powerful charge towards the entrance. It easily plows through the obstructions made by SCP-083, and then through the ceiling walls. Dr. Kondraki and SCP-682 have breached quarantine. Full evacuation protocols now in motion. It was obvious at this point that things had truly escalated out of control. SCP-083 had been presumed neutralized, yes but at the cost of releasing SCP-682 into Site-19 without proper personnel to enact containment procedures. Much like causing a flood to put out a kitchen fire, Dr. Kondraki's actions would put the entirety of Site-19 in grave danger. Most of the Site's personnel had already been fully evacuated, while emergency teams attempted to stem the losses and mitigate what damages they could. The entire situation had become an unmanageable mess. Ironically, that's the exact kind of mess that Dr. Kondraki excels at managing. 052 Security Log C-682-19-K Dr. Kondraki stays atop SCP-682 for the duration, holding on despite the rapid jerking motions made by SCP-682 during its run. SCP-682 begins to adapt as seen in previous observations, having incurred noticeable damage in its attempts to break through various obstacles. Spikes of a bone-like material begin to shoot up from its back in an attempt to harm or kill Dr. Kondraki. Dr. Kondraki incurs several wounds in this manner, able to avoid most of the protrusions. He attempts to make a hard turn by pulling against the cables, and is able to direct SCP-682 from his course. SCP-682 continues to charge forward, now directed towards the personnel dormitories. During its dash, SCP-682 breaks through SCP-173's containment. At this time, both SCP-682 and Dr. Kondraki are observed to keep direct eye contact with SCP-173, despite each continuing their attempts to outmaneuver the other. 
Dr. Kendraki is observed to speak to SCP-682, and a series of growls are recorded matching SCP-682's voice. SCP-682 begins to crash its back into walls and ceilings, trying to crush the doctor. The apparent conversation continues. Dr. Kondraki appears to laugh, and then makes another harsh tug. He redirects SCP-682 once more to the personnel cafeteria after checking a device on his wrist. SCP-682 crashes through the second quarantine dividers and arrives in the personnel sector. Dr. Kondraki waits until SCP-682 arrives in the cafeteria. Holding onto the cables, he vaults forward with tremendous force, swinging up and over SCP-682's head. SCP-682 now attempts to bite down on Dr. Kondraki as he scrambles to sit in a lone chair placed at the end of a table. Dr. Kondraki vanishes from visual contact as SCP-682 devours him. SCP-682 continues to cause further structural damage, begins advancing towards current evacuation zone. Audio Log 682-K Voices Identified Dr. Kondraki and SCP-682 You really hold a grudge, don't you? You are by far the most annoying of your species I have ever encountered. Killing you will be a favor for your whole reality. No need to do me any favors, Godzilla. Since you made lunch of the vampire, why don't we just let me off and call things square? Well, I guess that's not an option. How about you just <laughs> take me to my ride, and I'll get out of your hair? Not only the most annoying, but the one most lacking of common sense. The only way this ends is with you dead and rotting faster than you already are. Fair enough. Let's try that. That may be the first thing I've ever heard from one of you repulsive things that I've ever agreed with. The sound of metal scraping against enamel cancels out any conversation. A sickening snap of SCP-682's jaws concludes the recording. Evacuation Log S-E-19 Removal of safe and Euclid items from Site-19 continues. Transport to helipads A through E for temporary off-site containment goes well despite the current chaos. For the sake of relevance, this log has been redacted to focus on SCP-298, codename The Blood Organ, and the events in Hallway D-17. Several Level 1 personnel are used to transport SCP-298 due to its large size. The width of SCP-298 takes up most of the hallway. One of the personnel is seated on top of SCP-298 as it is carried, mock playing the organ. Audio logs confirm that the seated employee had won some form of bet previous to the incident. An explosion occurs elsewhere, causing a tremor. Several personnel falter, and SCP-298 is dropped. An odd sound is heard and noticed by several of the men. The sound is now confirmed to be that of displaced air. The personnel move to the back of the organ as they begin to hear a struggle. Dr. Kondraki is spotted, having incurred several injuries. Making a leap, he bounds over SCP-298. SCP-083 is also spotted, covered in an unknown fluid. He rounds the corner after Dr. Kondraki, but only spots several personnel and the organ. Scene speaking. Dr. Kondraki directs the man next to him to begin playing. Audio log C-298-K-083. Voices identified, SCP-083 and Dr. Kondraki, along with assorted Level 1 personnel. Where is he? You, you must have seen him. Tell me where he is, and I might not kill all of you. Who? That crazy guy who just ran past? He's right behind this thing. Good. Maybe I'll even add you to my security detail. What an honor that would be. What the hell is that sound? Bach. It's Bach. I like to call it the sucks to be you overture. What are... Is that my blood? What are you doing to my blood? Should I keep playing, sir? Don't you dare stop. Not even for a moment. Stop. I'll do whatever you want. Anything. Just stop playing that thing. I can't. I can't. So I was right. You can't regenerate your blood. I... I don't want to die. I shouldn't have to die. Not me. I'm not like you. Everybody dies, Duke. Just matters who dies on a given day. And today is your lucky day. Son of a- SCP-083 expires. Security Log S-E-19 
SCP-083's blood is drained from his body by the effect of SCP-298's music. It forms into a solid gel in the air, appearing as branches of a leafless tree. Dr. Kondraki moves from SCP-298's platform, instructing him to keep playing. He disappears into a room down the hall. SCP-083's blood is now completely drained, causing his desuscitated corpse to fall prone. His body seems to undergo an extremely rapid decomposition, the corpse being reduced to a hollow skeleton within a minute. Dr. Kondraki returns with a glass container and instructs the player to stop. He begins to collect the gelled blood from the air, placing it into the clear container. After less than a minute, the blood liquefies. Personnel appear to lack comprehension of the event that has just occurred. Dr. Kondraki seals the container and approaches the skeleton. Retrieving the skull, he places it under his arm. Dr. Kondraki exits Site-19 via helicopter with little trouble, assumed to be part of the evac team. Personnel are still somewhat stunned. The klaxons remind them that SCP-682 is still loose within Site-19. Excerpt from Post-Incident Interview 083-AR9-59 Interviewed, Dr. Wrights. So you do not think that Dr. Kondraki behaved recklessly? I didn't say that. But, relatively, compared to some of the things he's done, at least this one almost had a plan, or some facsimile of one. You have viewed the entirety of the logs, yes? Yep, all of it. A few times, actually. And I had to review my favorite parts. And you have no worries about Dr. Kondraki being a liability or a danger? Look, the man's a master of the indie ploy. And sometimes, actually, all the time, there is collateral damage. But that doesn't change the fact that he, in some bizarre way, knows what he's doing. And hey, if it saved my ass a few dozen times over, that doesn't hurt. So your personal opinion is that he is not a liability? Not as much as Edward Evan Cullen there. I mean, I've got just as big a vampire fetish as the next girl who grew up reading Anne Rice, but come on. Plus, throwing cat pee on him? That was beautiful. And in your professional opinion, having worked with Dr. Kondraki in the past? You clearly haven't been to Site 17 lately. Professional is... not my forte. Or Kondraki's for that matter. Shame about Site 19 though. At least it went out in a blaze of bad assery. Break room surveillance log S17- Voices identified, Dr. And Dr. Oh my god, how does he keep making things worse? No idea. This thing is on a delay, too. By this time, he probably leveled the whole facility. I is he riding 682? I can't believe we work for this guy. I have half a mind to tell that moron off myself and resign. What are you guys watching? Nothing, just our boss wrecking the Foundation's biggest site. Can you believe that guy? Wow, that is pretty intense. Dude, might want to cut the chatter. Lay off it, it's not like he's going to know I said it. If I could get away with it, I'd terminate him my- Terminate who? I like this talk already. I- I think I've seen enough. I- I think I'm gonna take a walk. Dibs on your seat. Anyone got popcorn?